Hello everyone and welcome to section 24.4 Revolutions in the Arts. So far in this chapter we've talked about politics and the changes in power in the countries throughout Europe and now we're going to focus on some of the changes that were happening in the arts during this period. During the first half of the 1800s most artists focused on themes of freedom, the rights of individuals, scenes of revolution, or an idealistic view of history. These reflected the major events of the Enlightenment and the Revolutionary Era. After 1848, political focus shifted to strong leaders who practiced real politic, like Bismarck and Cavour. The artistic focus moved to a realistic view of the world. Photography had recently been invented and was used as a way to detail the struggles of the world, as well as a tool for scientific investigation. The Romantic movement was, um, came about at the end of the 18th century, and Enlightenment ideas of reason gradually gave way to another major movement, which we call Romanticism. This movement reflected the deep interests in nature and the thoughts and feelings of individuals. In some ways, Romantic thinkers and writers reacted against the ideas of the Enlightenment. They turned from reason to emotion, from society to nature. Nationalism also fired up the Romantic imagination. Some of the Romantic poets of the time even participated in freedom movements, such as that of Greece. Romanticism went beyond feelings. They expressed a wide range of ideas and attitudes. In general, Romantic artists and thinkers focused on inner feelings, emotions, and imagination, focused on the mysterious or the supernatural, the exotic, grotesque, or horrifying. Um, you would see that they loved the beauties of an untamed nature and idealized the past as a simpler and nobler time. They glorified heroes and heroic actions and cherished folk traditions, music, and stories. They also valued common people and the individual and promoted radical change in democracy. Many of the works that we consider classics were written in this period. Some of the most well-known examples might be Victor Hugo's Les Miserables and The Hunchback of Notre Dame, or Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. This was also the period of time when the Grimm brothers compiled their German fairy tales into Grimm's fairy tales. Many of these stories were filled with supernatural, fearful, or even violent events. When it came to music, the composers in this period were ruled by emotions, and in this period they were risen above their peers to be heroes. Some of the composers, such as Liszt, became so popular that you really could consider them to be some of the first rock stars. One of the people leading the way in this period was one of the greatest composers we've ever seen. His name was Ludwig von Beethoven. Though he was not born deaf, his hearing began to go around the age of 30, and his hearing progressively got worse for 19 years until he eventually lost it completely by the age of 49. This deterioration of hearing put him into deep depression, which eventually almost led him to the brink of suicide. However, he recovered, and his classical music of the Enlightenment um, evolved into romantic compositions and is everlasting even into this day. Some other notable composers include Chopin and Mendelssohn. Just like how music and art change, the day-to-day -day life of the people had changed as well. The world was rapidly industrializing and every aspect of life was affected. There was a growing class of industrial workers who did not live the most glamorous of lives. They lived grim and dirty lives in dirty, crowded cities, and in literature and the visual arts, realism tried to show this life as it was, not as it should be. The new art of photography was used to capture reality. For the first time, photographers were able to capture a moment in time with precision. The first photographs were called daguerreotypes, named after the inventor, Louis Daguerre. These images won him worldwide fame, though they were not able to be distributed among people. British inventor William Talbot invented a light-sensitive paper that he used to produce the first negatives, and this allowed photographs to be reproduced into print for the first time. Writers also began to depict life in reality as well. An example would be Charles Dickens. He created many characters and scenes that depicted London's working poor. His book Little Dorrit described the life of a working class person set in a gloomy neighborhood. And just like anything that happens, each action often has a reaction. One of the reactions that came from the actions of realism was the Impressionist movement of France. Around 1860, a group of painters in Paris began to do an impression of their subject or a moment in time instead of trying to capture the reality of that moment. They aimed to show how they felt about a moment or how that moment was impressed upon them as opposed to the reality of it. 
These impressionists were fascinated by light and often used pure or shimmering colors to capture a moment that you might only see at a glance. These impressionists also showed a more positive view of the new urban society they were seeing in Western Europe. Instead of abused workers, they showed shopkeepers and dock workers. They showed dance halls and cafes. And several of these artists are household names today. Monet, Degas, Renoir are all very popular and are still popular today. All of these changes in society were happening quickly in this era due to the industrialization of the period. We're going to be talking in more detail about that in chapter 25. I hope you enjoyed this chapter, hope you learned something, and I hope you took great notes. Thanks!